Is marijuana addictive? Could it be a source of substance abuse for your teen or young adult? Well, in this video, you'll hear from Sarah Fletcher, the Chief Clinical Officer at Sandstone Care, as she explains the connection and effects of marijuana and addiction. Hey, it's Clint with Sandstone Care, where we help teens, young adults, and their families overcome challenges with substance use, addiction, and mental health conditions. All right, let's get right to it. Is marijuana addictive? It's a really good question. So new studies are coming out that due to the potency of cannabinoids that are being sold in stores now, there are physical and mental withdrawal components to marijuana as we, as we can buy it and sell it today. With that being said, whenever there is a withdrawal potential, there is going to be some sort of addictive component to it, right? Because whenever we experience withdrawal symptoms, continuing to use that substance is going to make those withdrawal symptoms go away. That's what leads to continued use and increased tolerance. And so there absolutely is a withdrawal potential and an addictive component to marijuana now. I will say that this has changed over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, there weren't studies that showed marijuana having high levels of addictive components within that substance. But, it, but now that we're seeing those high level THC potencies, we are seeing adolescents and young adults really struggling with high physical and emotional cravings. And we're seeing those those early onset withdrawal symptoms of irritability, loss of appetite, sweats, increased depressive feelings, increased anxiety. And so with all of those symptoms that are presenting, it brings us back to being able to use that substance is going to curve those symptoms, which leads us into an addictive place. All right. I just want to, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this marijuana situation, we'll call it, right? We know that as the marijuana industry has become, I don't know if we'd say more regulated or at least as it's become more commoditized, commodity, it's a commodity. <laughs> people can go, people can go to the store to buy it, right? Um, that they're also creating different blends and they're growing marijuana to be more potent. Um, and so are you saying that part of the reason why marijuana is addictive and can have withdrawal symptoms is because it it's more potent than it used to be? Yep, that's correct. So about five, six, seven years ago, we were seeing THC potency hovering around 30, 33%. Now we're seeing THC potency around 99%. And so over the last five to 10 years, we've seen marijuana concentrates increase at rapid speeds. We're also seeing different kinds of ways to administer marijuana, including shatter, including wax, uh, edibles are becoming so available to adolescents and young adults that the way that it's being distributed and grown it is increasing that potency to super high levels, which is what brings on those addictive components and those withdrawal symptoms. So I'm just going to talk about, I want to ask a question about CBD, right? So CBD is everywhere. People are talking about CBD and they're putting it in drinks and they're putting it in lotions and all of these things. And I've heard parents who were talking about, you know, using CBD as a way to help kids who have anxiety or kids who are feeling anxious, right? So, you know, in your experience, is CBD like a safe alternative to something like a marijuana that if a child is using marijuana to try and cope with anxiety or uh, stress that they could turn to that and it'd be okay? Yeah, my recommendation when it comes to CBD is, first of all, the studies are very new. So there are studies that are coming out saying that CBD is a safer alternative, that it does have therapeutic components, and that it can be a, a therapeutic intervention. 
However, my recommendation is I would never encourage parents to substitute any sort of substances without the support and supervision of a medical professional. So no different than I wouldn't administer antibiotics that I found or purchased from someone and give them to my loved one or my child because I felt like it was a safer alternative. I would always consult with a medical professional before making any sort of decisions around administering mood altering substances to someone that I care about. And so early research does show that there is a potential therapeutic intervention for the use of true CBD. The research is still new. And so my hope is that as we continue to practice research and come out with really good peer-reviewed research. I said research too many times, sorry. My my hope is that when, as we continue to see these studies come out and we continue to look into the research that be, that's being done, we can find a more concrete answer of whether or not CBD could be a therapeutic intervention down the line. I will say that currently with the research being as new as it is, I would recommend waiting until there's there's more concrete evidence backing a substance like CBD. If you want to learn more about treatment options for you, your teen, or young adult, then tell us about your situation on a confidential call using the number in the description box below or live chat with us at sansdon'tcare.com. We'll connect you with the treatment that you need, and if we're not the right fit, we'll get you where you need to go. Be well and remember that change is possible.